Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha, and it's great to have you back. This is video two, the top seven options trading principles, and thanks so much for checking this out. So now that you're back, I'm pretty sure you know there's a better way to invest and trade options, or else you wouldn't be here, right? And there is a better way. And this week I'm going to continue to build on the foundation and framework for the next set of videos that are going to be coming out. But as a review, let's just go over what we've covered already. So again, if you remember, in video one, we talked about options versus stocks. So why would we trade options? What's the benefit to trading options over stocks? Are there any benefits? And if you're new to this set of videos, I encourage you to go back and take a look at video one in detail before continuing forward. Today, we're going to talk about the top seven options trading principles, like I mentioned. In video three, we're going to talk about risk and the full-time business aspect of trading for a living. And in video four, the most anticipated one, we're going to take a look at a detailed, uh, at the detailed strategies I use each month to generate income. All right, so let's get started here. Remember, grab some pen, paper, notes, pause the video if you need to, to uh, set up your recording. You can record this, play it back as many times as you want, but there's going to be a lot of info in here, so get ready. Oh yeah, and one more key thing. If you have any questions or comments as I go through this, please add them to the section below. I'll answer every question added below. All right, so here we go. Principle number one of seven. Options are multidimensional. Kirk, what does that even mean, multidimensional? Well, let's take a look at a stock trade. So stocks, like we talked about in video one, are only two-dimensional, meaning that you can only make money basically in two different ways. Ignoring dividends for a minute here, you can really only make money if a stock, if you trade a stock that is going from a higher position or you sell it and then you buy it lower and make money that way. Or on the alternative, you would buy a stock low and sell it at a higher price. And this is how most people are generally conditioned to trade and invest their money. Now there is a key benefit to this and that's something I'll always point out. In stock trading, you have the luxury of time on your side, meaning that at any time in the future, you can get out of the trade. So you can wait many, many years and many, many months for a trade to actually show profit and then get out of the trade. With options, you don't have that luxury, but I think there's some other benefits as well. So options are multidimensional in the fact that you can not only make money if the stock goes up or down, but you can also make money if the stock goes completely sideways. There are strategies where you can actually make money purely if the stock goes sideways and doesn't move. I doubt there's any other thing that you can do in the world that would make money if something doesn't move. And additionally, you can make money on directional bets. Not just the fact that the stock has to go up or down, but you can actually make money trading options betting that the stock will just make a big move in one direction or the other. So if we made a bet here in September that it doesn't matter where the S&P 500 goes, mm. but that it goes in a large move in either direction and we make money. Now I've also thrown up here the expiration type cycles that you'll see in options trading. And that is one of the things that we have to be concerned about, but also one of the major benefits to how we can continuously make money month after month. And that's because options don't have the luxury of being able to hold them for long periods of time. They do have expiration dates. They do have a finite life. And this is something that would help you just demonstrate visually on the chart when those time periods are each month and quarter. So let's get into principle number two here. And that is what we had just talked about. And that's this time decay or theta aspect of options trading. So as you can see here on this chart of time value versus time in general, which is decreasing, we know that options have a finite life. And what that means is that over time, no matter where the option goes, no matter where the underlying security goes, part of that option's value is going to slowly decay and decay each and every day. And it's going to quickly start to decay as we start to get inside 30 days. And that's because we're basically pushing this option contract up against a firm deadline and it's either make it or break it. Either make money or don't make money in this particular case. So that's a real key aspect because this comes into play a lot when choosing whether to buy an option or to sell an option. To be an option seller and take in a credit and have time decay work for you or to be an option buyer and be running up against the clock. We can visually see this on a picture of two different expiration cycles that I did a while back and I'm reposting here in this video. So again, if you're having trouble seeing this, 
expand the video in your monitor screen or in your desktop, laptop, and make it HD. Everything's recorded here at HD, so you should be able to see it just fine if you expand it. But what we've basically taken a look at here are two different expiration months. So we're taking a look at a December expiration, which is 30 days, and a January expiration, which is 65 days away. Same underlying stock, both the call side and the put side. And we've highlighted the theta in each, each individual contract month. And we can see visually here that the January options are generally losing about $28 per day in value. And they're losing that every single day for the next 65 days all the way to expiration. But as that last chart showed, that amount of money that it's losing is going to increase exponentially each and every day as we get closer to expiration. So we can visually see that here again on the chart that the December options, which have 30 days to go, are losing $39 on average per day. So you can see that the further out options, they're losing money, but they're not losing money as quickly as the December options. The same thing is true over here on the right side under the put category. The January puts are losing about $30 a day. And as we move into December, the December options are losing about $41, $42 a day. So you can see it's exponentially increasing the amount of losses. So this brings us to principle number three. We have to know the probabilities that we're trading. And this is something that I go over in our online membership is finding these probabilities and how to determine these. But remember this graph from video one. We have to keep in mind that the market is 100% random. It's statistically and all the studies have proven that on any given day, the market has an equal chance of going up or down and has an equal chance of going up 1% or down 1%, down 2% or up 2%. So if we know that, why are we trying to pick the market direction? We should be trading statistically high probability trades that we know will make money over time. So this is how I usually show this in my coaching program is I take this probability chart and I turn it sideways and apply it to that same chart that we had looked at before. So this really helps visualize what I'm talking about here. So we have the same S&P and we just threw it over here. It's not 100% accurate. It's not going to be accurate, but it gives you a good visual representation. But generally speaking, that over time, the S&P will trade inside of this very dark blue region here most of the time. And that's because it's going to trade in more or less a regular range here over the next couple months. Now, it still has a good chance of getting to this more lighter blue area over time, but you can see that the probability of getting to this area is a little bit less. That's still a good chance, but a little bit less probability. And then furthermore, it has a very, very small probability, not a 0% probability, but a very small probability of reaching these extremes or making an extreme type of a move in a short period of time. So again, you can see that as we go in time, the probability that we get to certain ranges increases or decreases. And this really helps us determine which strikes to choose and at what option contract months to choose as well. So here we go, we're gonna get into volatility, which really just dovetails right on the back of what we just talked about with probabilities. And so this is the volatility or vega part, the principle that you have to understand when it comes to options. So I've done this by showing two different stocks just to give you an idea of what volatility is. It's never too important to understand just the basics of what volatility is, even if you think you know what it is. Here are two stocks that start the beginning of the year and end the beginning of the year at the exact same price, $100. And the average between the two stocks is exactly $100. But there's a difference between them, and that's the frequency and the range in which they trade. This black line here around 100 is a stock that is a very low volatility stock. It trades in a very defined range right around $100 all year. This blue line is a very high volatility stock. It has major, major market swings and swings in much more dramatic or radical fashion than the black stock, black line stock that we have below. So again, this highlights the differences between a high volatility and low volatility stock. So what does this mean graphically or probability wise? Well, here we have a couple different probability distributions, not just that normal one that we've showed you before. We're starting to get a little bit more technical in what we're understanding as far as volatility and probabilities, which is why these principles build on top of themselves.
So in this case, this tall or red distribution graph is actually a distribution for a low probability stock. Again, think of it this way. If the stock is at $50 here as the mean or average, in low probability markets, it's going to have very little fluctuation. 51, 52, 49, 48, right around 50 or so. So the bulk of the probabilities or the likelihood that it stays in that range is going to be much higher. So we have this tall, very narrow looking distribution graph. Now, on the other hand, we have a very short and fat and low distribution graph down here in blue. And this equates to a very high volatility stock, a stock that's moving a lot, like the one that we saw in blue writing just last slide. And this means that even though the mean or the average is right exactly the same, the wide swings make these wide, fat, short tails. And that means that the stock has an equal likelihood of making these dramatic swings on either end. So volatility is higher. There's not a good likelihood that at any one given point that it will be right back at the average at the end of the year. So what does this get us into, right? We've talked about time, we've talked about volatility, we've talked about probabilities. This really gets us into principle number five, quite possibly the most important principle you should ever understand about trading options. And that's this, strategy will always trump your assumption. So what does that mean, right? Well, it means that you have an assumption about the market and that's fine. You think the market's going higher, you think the market's going lower. But as an options trader, you need to throw that assumption out and you need to take a look at things like time to expiration, volatility, where the stock is in relation to where the strike price is, what the probability is, and throwing all of those factors in one pot. What is the one strategy in that instance that will give you the best chance of success? So it looks something like this. We're building from the bottom up and we're choosing one of the strategies up here from the top. So we take a look at things like the spot price or the underlying price of the security we're trading versus the strike price that we want. Are we trading in the money, out of the money, at the money, etc.? How much time do we have until expiration? Huge important factor. Are we trading an option that has 30 days to go or 60 days or 90 days to go? And then volatility. Are we in a low volatility environment or a high volatility environment? Now, interest rates on here because it does have an impact later on, but in our current market with low interest rates, it's not going to have as big of an impact as you think. So once we factor in all of those different things, and this is something that we go over in much more detail in our membership and online training again, but once we factor in all of those different things, then it will lead us to determining which option is the right option or option strategy. See, what most people do is they go up here and they try to pick an option strategy and then fit it to an underlying security. And that's the wrong way to go about things. You should go and look at that underlying security, take a look at all of these different factors, and then decide which option strategy is the best for you. So in this case, we picked the straddle strategy. And that would look something like this down below. You have a stock that is fairly close to its strike price. So we're trading a $50 stock and we're trading the $50 strike price options. It's got a lot of time to maturity, but the volatility is very low. And we're trying to take advantage of a volatility move in either direction. So that's why we would trade the straddle in this particular instance. And again, I could go over all of these here below but or above, but again, the key here is that we have to look at the underlying security and the factors around that option trade, which will help us determine which one to trade. People get it very, very backwards in this industry, and that's what leads to a lot of losses. Okay, so let's get into principle number six of seven, and that is liquid active products. For all of the stuff that we talked about here before, trading high probability, trading things that are going to move, high volatility, low volatility, trading these distribution graphs, we have to have liquid active products, products that are easy to get into and out of, and that have a lot of people trading them so we have a lot of data points to go off of. So let me give you an example of a liquid versus a non-liquid stock. And I just basically grabbed these at the end of the day here making this video. And I have the S&P 500 or the SPY ETF right here and the November options which have 24 days to go to expiration. You'll notice on the call side there's a ton of volume and open interest. I mean just right here there's 30,000 contracts traded today and 112,000 of open interest. Now let's take a look at NNN and this is just the security I threw up there and see what's stuck but you can see the same November options with 24 days to go till expiration only traded one contract in one strike today. 
So this is a good, great example of what not to trade. You're not going to trade these types of options. Too many people start going into these very exotic looking stocks that have been making big moves. But even though they've been making big moves and they're all over the place and they're very exotic and hot in the news and they're penny stocks or this or that, the key reality is that they don't have enough volume and open interest, enough activity to be able to get in and out of them quickly at good prices. And moreover, the more volume and activity they have, the better, the better we can determine the data points and the probabilities. This really leads us to the next one. The more trades we can place, the more probabilities will work themselves out over time. Think about this distribution graph here, one that you've now come to recognize on Option Alpha, which I appreciate. Think about this distribution graph being built with each individual dot, and each individual dot represents a trade in the market. Now, if we were to wipe out 98% of these dots and just have a couple dots here and there, we get a general idea of where the market is probability-wise, but we wouldn't get a firm understanding like we do with this very full and complete distribution. And that's how we have to go about in our trading. We have to trade, uh, make a lot of trades, and also trade things that are traded a lot by other people so that we know what the probabilities are ahead of time and we're not making guesses. Again, this builds on principle number seven, the last principle in this video, and that is that we have to manage risk by doing that. We do that with small trades. So this is actually a lot easier than you probably think. And I promise you, once you go through this, you'll understand why small trades equate, equates to better risk management. So if we're trading the probabilities, then the best thing we can do is position ourselves for success is to start our trade size or start our trade size from the start small. I made this mistake many years ago myself, trading too large for my own good. And I did this under the auspice of saving commissions. I would increase my trade size, the type of product that I was trading, trade a larger product, bigger value under the auspice of I was saving commissions. But at the end of the day, I was doing myself no good whatsoever. And that I actually did better trading smaller and trading more often. So when you trade too large a position, you run the risk of the underlying stock making the one in a million move against you. Now we call this in the options trading industry, the tail risk of the security. And we get it by taking a look at this distribution graph. And it's this type of move. It's this type of move that's the 0.01% chance it makes this move. But of course, in anything in life, it's probably gonna be and it's probably going to happen just when you think that it won't happen and just when you're not prepared. So we want to avoid this tail risk and we want to do that by trading small and by trading often. So if you limit your trade size, then one or two or even three of those trades that make the impossible move won't hurt you. And that's the key here. We want to limit our trade size, not be too big, not try to make too much money too quickly on any one possible trade. And over time, slowly crank out those great high probability trades. So here's an interesting fact to drive home that point. Statistically, did you know that the chances of going bankrupt, investing just 5% of your money in each trade, is 1 in 3.49 billion? And that means that just 5% of your money in each and every trade, which is actually a fairly decent amount of money in each trade, Statistically, you have a very minuscule chance of going bankrupt because not, no one of those trades is going to, over time, wipe you out. You're not going to have that one in a million trade on every single trade that you make. So again, trade small, trade often. So we're going to get into risk management a lot more in the next video. But for now, like I said, the key is to trade small and trade often. Until then, please add your feedback, questions, and comments below. Like I said, I will answer every question you add below, and I will do so in a quickly time manner. And oh yeah, if you really found this helpful, please share it online. Share it on all of your favorite social networks. Let everyone know what we're doing here at Option Alpha and help spread the word.